So this comes with Windows 10 Home. What the luck, come on. Let's get rid of that Windows Home. Let's get some Windows Pro. Copy and paste my code from the description. You can also get Office 2019. Just paste my code, woof. It's Windows Pro time. Righto, tell the other champs now. Microsoft just blew us away. Woof! They brought the heat. They really did. You know, when Apple had their event and they said, by innovation only, well, that's what Microsoft should have done. Now, in this video, you're going to learn which product you should buy, the mistakes you should not make, the difference between the SKUs, because it's very confusing, all these different products, which product is right for what sort of usage, some very important information because it is very confusing this year because there's a lot of different CPUs. There's like three different types of silicon and if you're doing some type of work, it's not going to be good with the AMD and then vice versa with the Intel. So stay tuned. You don't want to make any mistakes buying these products. Let's start off with, yeah, we'll just quickly, the Surface Neo, the dual screen sort of laptop and the Surface Duo phone, a phone, an Android phone by Microsoft. Amazing foldable devices there. I like that the screen's not foldable. You know, that's where all the problems are, right? Having the foldable screen. They've done it right. This is the way to do it until you can get, I don't know, you can't get glass to fold. You, you can only have plastic and plastic is soft. The earbuds too. I'll cover those another time. There's a lot of foldable dual screen sort of devices coming out. I know for a fact there's a lot of two screen devices coming out next year. But anyway, what everybody's going bonkers about is this new Surface Pro X. Now... Do not be fooled by this because you only want this for a specific use. You, you know, you look at the pictures, you see them saying how thin it is and all this. You've got to remember that this is using an ARM processor. So we'll just go into the specs. And it is indeed a custom one made for Microsoft. You know, it's using Snapdragon technology or Qualcomm technology. Now, there are advantages to having this sort of ARM um, tablet or two-in-one. But you don't want to buy this if you're going to be video editing, doing anything that's going to push the machine. Certainly not for gaming. The normal Surface Pro will be able to game and so would a laptop. But this one, forget about it. This is a productivity machine made for on the go. Now, the advantages of having ARM is, one, they're very low-powered so they don't get very hot, they're fanless, they're always connected. They're like your phone. They're always connected to a network and you just touch the screen or press the button, whatever, and it's on instantly, exactly like your phone. Now, they usually come with great battery life because we already have ARM Windows laptops that have like 20 hours battery life, but this one says only up to 14 hours or 13 hours, is it? Up to 13. Yes, there you go, 13. So in real world, maybe 12 or you know, 11, 12, something like that. One of the biggest benefits to going to ARM, this one doesn't really have because you can just buy normal Ultrabooks that can get that sort of battery life, especially with the, you know, the full HD displays and stuff like that. And you can also get Ultrabooks with LTE connectivity as well. So I'm not 100% sold on this because if you don't know, because this is using ARM and it's using normal x86 Windows operating system, it's running in emulation. So it's crippled. So they can say how fast it is. doesn't matter. It's running in emulation. The Microsoft products are actually fast, but there's going to be a lot of stuff that's going to be still slow. That's just the nature of emulation. It's so if you just want always connected, instant on, on the go sort of device, yeah, I reckon you can get this, but don't be thinking that it's so much thinner and lighter than the surface because look, we have here 1.7 pounds, 774 grams. Let's go to the Surface Pro 7. You have 1.7 and 775 grams. It is one gram heavier, the Surface Pro 7. Now looking at them, you wouldn't think that in a million years, how thin the Surface X is, but yes, look at here, 774 grams versus 775 grams. That's virtually no difference in portability. So what are you getting with the Surface Pro X? I don't see the benefits to it other than having a slightly longer battery life and being always connected. So if you really need the always connected thing, instant resume, but these ones resume pretty much instantly now anyway. I don't know. Let's get to the laptops, the Surface Pro 3 laptops. Now this is really interesting because you have two variants, the 15 inch and the 13 inch. 13 inch are powered by quad core Ice Lake CPUs and the 15 inch is powered by Ryzen CPUs with Vega graphics. So both of them have good graphics. Now this is a custom one made for Microsoft in the 15 inch. I'll get onto the 13 inch. Now with the 13 inch, you get that nice three by two display, 
So it's an awesome display on it. You have a couple of processor options. You do not have the option of the i3 here, and that's why it doesn't come in at the cheaper price, whereas the Surface Pro does come in at the cheaper price. Now, if we have a look at these CPUs, one thing you've got to know between the i5 and the i7 is the i7 does have the better graphics. They both use the Iris graphics. So if you look over here, Iris Plus graphics. So that means you'll be able to play games, some games, you know, like Fortnite at 1080p, even like Counter-Strike, they were saying you could do 720, like 120 frames or something. Double the graphics performance of the Intel HD, the last generation. Now these are using Ice Lake CPUs, 10th generation, 10 nanometer. Now you can tell that by here, where it says G. When it's G, it's Ice Lake. When it's U or Y, it is Comet Lake. They're all 15 watt parts. Even the Ryzen CPUs in the 15 inch, which I'll get to in a minute, are 15 watt parts as well. But if you want the best graphics for the 13 inch Surface Laptop 3, you have to get the i7 because you have a difference here with the GPU frequency. So if we have a look here at the graphics processing unit on the i5 on the left, and we have a look at it on the right with the i7, you can see here, it's 1.1 gigahertz versus 1.05 gigahertz. Not that much difference, but there's a difference. Now you might be thinking, oh, I'll get the 15 inch because it's nice, thin and light, the 15 inch, which it is, and it's going to be better for gaming. Maybe it will. Most likely it is a custom part. We'll have to wait and see, and I will be testing these out. But what you miss in the 15 inch is Intel QuickSync and all the benefits of the Iris Plus, like the two times HEVC improvement for video editing and there are a lot of applications that use QuickSync and if you use an AMD product, you're not going to get all those improvements with the HEVC and all that sort of stuff. So video editing might actually be better on the 13 inch than it will with the 15 inch. Now with the 15 inch, you get the Ryzen CPUs up to a Ryzen 7 RX Vega 11 graphics. It should be more powerful than the Ice Lake CPUs in terms of graphics performance. You should get a better performance in gaming. Wait for the reviews before you find out. Maybe you want a 15 inch and there's no choice you're not going to get a smaller laptop but um, if you want to know which one performs best I would strongly suggest you wait and definitely if you wanted to use one of these for content creation the Intel one might be the best bet now you do get USB-C with these no Thunderbolt I had no idea why because Thunderbolt is built into Ice Lake CPUs I can understand with the Ryzen's like the 15 inch if it didn't have Thunderbolt or why they don't have it in the 13 inch with the Ice Lake CPUs I have no idea, but it does have at least USB-C. You can upgrade the SSD in it now, so it's removable solid state drive. And with the 15 inch, you can get up to 32 gigs RAM, where you can only get 16 gigs with the 13 inch. Now, what you'll notice here is you have LPDDR4X RAM, because obviously Ice Lake supports that. So you get the more low powered RAM in the 13 inch, and they both have the same sort of battery life. So you don't have to worry about that. So that's what you need to know for that. Now, when it does come to the good old Surface Pro, the one that everyone's probably gonna buy, and the one I'd probably suggest you do buy, actually, I prefer the laptop my personally myself. A lot of people love this thing. This thing will be able to game now, okay? Because it's got the Ice Lake CPUs. We have USB-C. I don't know why it doesn't have Thunderbolt. Again, I'm going to go on about this, but yeah, it doesn't have it. The battery life is not as good as the laptop. It's not as good as the X as well. And really, this is basically the same as the Surface Pro 6 with USB Type-C and just upgraded Ice Lake CPUs and removable NVMe storage, which is very good because they don't actually put particularly fast SSDs in these Surface products. So it's good that you can change them now. But here you have the option of the i3. Do not get the i3. Even though it's a G, it has Intel HD graphics. You can see here it says Intel HD graphics and with the i5, i7, you have the Iris. And of course, the i7 is the fastest, as I've mentioned before. Wi-Fi 6 on all of these, except the X, okay, so remember the Surface Pro X does not come with Wi-Fi 6. Yes, you get the built-in, you know, LTE and stuff like that, but you're not getting Wi-Fi 6. It says only Wi-Fi 5 here, so you won't be able to use WPA3. You know, if you're on Wi-Fi more than you are out and about, you know, with LTE, and remember, you can always hotspot. This is the thing that's curious. I mean, I don't know why people are so worried about their laptop or product being able to connect to LTE or whatever, because you can just hotspot it from your phone. So I don't know why that's such a big deal. But anyway, they're the pitfalls. They're the things you need to know. Also, you know, they all have fast charging now, and also the trackpad on the laptops is bigger. So 
That was one of my criticisms with that. It's very small laptop on the Surface laptops previously. Don't make the mistakes of, you know, oh, get the Surface Pro X because everybody's talking about its arm. And uh, I don't think there's that many benefits to that. The Surface Pro 7 is the killer price. The Surface laptops have always been one of my highly recommended laptops. Like they got good. They're good. They're just quality. Just they're no brainer laptops. And you know, there's no bloat on them. They're nice and clean. Catch you next one. Sally, ho. Oh.